These six piston mechanical disc brakes are pretty bonkers, but so, so is the price. A single caliper cost me over 200 quid on AliExpress. However, they are beautifully made and look like they would offer some serious braking performance. So how do they stack up and can they justify that cost? My name, as always, is Luke and welcome back to Trace Velo. So Juantec have been in the mechanical disc brake game for a while now. They build hybrid hydraulic brake calipers. So essentially each caliper is a closed loop of oil. Pulling the brake lever compresses the master cylinder and pistons push brake pads onto the disc. This is the Juantec F1. The caliper they're probably best known for actually. Robust, dependable, and relatively cheap at about 130 quid for a pair. But they also offer the Juantec GT-F. They also offer the GT-P, so that's flat mount and post mount. But regardless, more expensive at 250 quid for a pair, but four brake pistons and slightly larger brake calipers. The GTF-6 is their current top of the line. A frankly ridiculous so six brake pistons, the largest brake pads of all three, but a price tag to match. Around 200 quid, maybe just over for a single caliper. It's kind of like a Pokemon evolution, really. You've got the Charmander, the Charmeleon and the Charizard. Um, anyway, in order to assess the performance of this six piston monstrosity, we're gonna have a Juantec showdown. F1 versus GTF versus GTF6. And I've bought all of these calipers myself, by the way. This isn't sponsored by Juantec or, or anything like that. Over 550 quid <laughs> that I've spent on all of these calipers. So if you could subscribe, help me offset some of that cost, that would be a blessing. Um, anyway, before we crack on, there's one thing I've got to take care of. Okay, so this caliper is basically brand new. I've, uh, I've just got this. This Juantec GT, probably only about 300 miles into this caliper, so that's gonna be absolutely fine. However, this original F1 here, I've had this about three or four years, and by now, I've probably sunk a couple of thousand miles into this thing. I was using this relatively recently, and it definitely feels a little spongier than it used to when it was sort of fresh out of the box. So I'm gonna try and bleed this caliper. You've got bleed ports there and there. And on the table, I've got a bleed kit, which should have the correct adapter to fit those screw holes. So before I start testing all three, I'm gonna, yeah, make sure we're on an even playing field. I've never done this before, but it should be relatively simple. So let's give it a go. Okay, so first step was to remove the brake pads and I don't have a bleed block specific to the Juantec caliper. So I've got this, oh, so I'll wedge, wedge that in. And next step is to open one of the bleed ports and yeah, drain out the oil. So let's crack on. So I suspect over time, some of the oil has probably leaked out past the piston seals, meaning there's a small air bubble in the loop somewhere. The seals themselves are fine. There wasn't like a, a catastrophic leak. This is just something that needs doing every so often. So a brake bleed should bring these back up to new, basically. Okay, once your caliper has been drained of existing fluid, the next step is to attach two syringes, one with oil to one bleed port, the other one without any in it to the other bleed port. And the idea here is that I'm gonna push and pull mineral oil between these two syringes until all the air has been evacuated from the caliper. So let's crack on. So while doing this, make sure you turn the caliper upside down. Might wanna tap or knock it against the table to get all the air bubbles expelled. Also make sure you compress the master cylinder a couple of times too. With that done, you can remove one syringe, cap off the bleed port and do the same with the other. Finally, clean everything off with brake clean or some isopropyl alcohol and you are done. Incredibly simple to do this. Took about 10 minutes really. So yeah, with that done, let's do some testing. So I'm going to start with the Juantec F1s on the bike here. I've got the other two in, in my backpack so I can swap them out later. And I'm in Brill in, in Buckinghamshire. So I've got a nice set of hills to kind of uh, test the brakes out on. In fact, that's a massive hill down there. So bedding in each caliper won't be a problem. So let's crack on and see if I can tell any difference. So this was essentially back to back hill testing, getting up to around 35, 40 miles an hour and hitting the brakes, really trying to build some heat into the disc rotor and the caliper. Now for the F1 and GT calipers, I have two of each front and rear, but I, I didn't really 
fancy spending over 400 quid on two of the GTF6 calipers. So for the purposes of this testing, I'm only swapping out the front brakes. As it happens, on the rear, I'm running one that I've tested quite recently, actually, a TRP high road caliper. But while you might see me pull the rear brake, I'm really relying on the front to sort of bring me to a stop. So the F1 is, is kind of the most basic of the three here, just a simple two piston caliper, but with a fresh bleed, it was performing nicely. It was also a lovely day, which helps. I feel like the rain this winter just never let up. But anyway, enough chat about, about the weather. Let's get back to it. So this lovely looking jersey is just 17 quid. It's from today's sponsor, Sirocco, and it's from their new beginner collection. So if you're just getting into cycling, or maybe you want to update some of your old kit on a bit of a budget, definitely worth a look. I think it looks really lovely on. It's got minimal branding which is nice, it's super comfortable, and the materials and construction are top notch, as always. Anti-slip silicon hem around the bottom, four thread overlock stitching on all of the seams for added durability, and nice touches like reinforcing on high traffic areas around the rear pockets. They also have bib shorts and tights in the collection. These bib shorts are just 17 quid, and the bib tights are only 21. They've ditched the shoulder straps to save a bit on cost, but they stay up really well with this rubbery, grippy material on the inside. And the padding, while basic, is decent. Definitely gets the job done. But Sirocco do all sorts of gear to suit any budget, really. I mean, I've been wearing their stuff for like three, three years nearly at this point. They're just a great sponsor and they genuinely do some great stuff. So if you wanna check them out, use my link in the description, save 10% off of everything. And if you do get something via that link, I get a bit of kickback as well, which is pretty cool. Um, anyway, <laughs> enough of that, let's get back to it. Right, forgive me, I've had to kind of duck behind this uh, hedge here to, <laughs> to stay out of the wind, but the testing for the Juventech F1s is complete, decent braking, so yeah, good benchmark. They bite really nicely once they're bedded in, although that being said, I am, I'm not a massive fan of the stock brake pad compound that's supplied with the Juventech calipers, but at least it means I can be consistent across all three, all three types because, um, yeah, although the brake pad sizes are different between the three calipers, at least the stock compound is exactly the same so testing will at least be consistent. Anyway, that being said, let's get the GTFs installed. So just changing these over on the side of the road here, and the GTF calipers are a decent upgrade. Rather than the regular two pistons, they have four pistons to push the pads onto the disc. However, the master cylinder seems identical, and in fact, all of the actuation arms where you clamp the brake cable, they're the same length with all three calipers, so the amount of leverage from the brake lever should be pretty much the same. Now, as mentioned, the brake pads are slightly larger with these, and while the caliper might seem bigger, it actually weighs a little less than the F1. Anyway, same testing regime, smashing the hills to get the pads bedded in, followed by some long brake pulls to really get a feel for the braking performance. However, on this run, I faced a little issue that I'd never had before. Okay, so as I was cruising down this hill, getting these brakes bedded in, I, I faced an issue that I've heard about, but I've never actually like felt before. Basically, the front wheel, as I was braking, was kind of juddering, like, juh, 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 juh. and have a look at the disc rotor here. So hopefully you can see you've got dark patch, light patch, dark patch, light patch, dark light, dark light, all the way around the disc there. And that's an indication that these aren't bedded in properly because you get grip, no grip, grip, no grip. So um, yeah, I think I can burn this off if I do a few more brake pulls down this hill. But yeah, really weird, never faced this before. And it was quite scary actually. The whole front wheel was like juddering back and forth. But yeah, I think if I bed these in uh, properly, I can burn this off and eliminate that problem. So let's give it a go. So yeah, strange issue, but one or two more brake pulls sorted out and cleaned off the disc rotor, which hopefully you can see here. Also, it wasn't a loose top cap or compression plug, which can cause an issue similar to this if you have play between the fork and the headset bearings. So yeah, the braking on these four piston GTs, definitely a little sharper, a little bit tighter than those original F1s. So with that being said, let's, let's get back up that hill and get those ridiculous purple calipers installed on the bike. Yeah, these hills took their toll on, on my quads. This is the altitude data from my cycle computer during the testing, just up, down, up, down. Maybe I improved my VO2 max, who knows, either way, it was, it was pretty knackering. Anyway, back at the top, I got the GTFs off and the GTF6 calipers slapped on the bike. Now, in all honesty, I was ready to be a bit underwhelmed. I'd been using this caliper for a few weeks prior, just doing some general riding, 
out and about. Cruising around like this, just stopping on top of the hoods, they break nicely, but you don't really feel the benefit much. Plus, I'd been riding on the flat. I hadn't really sort of put them under pressure yet. But on these hills, stopping on the drops and really giving it some welly, from the very first brake pull, it was clear that, yeah, these had some power behind them. The pads are a little bigger, so they took a bit longer to bed in than the other two. But once they were there, and after riding all three back to back, yeah, actually surprised me. Really impressive. So after testing pretty much all day, actually, it probably comes as little surprise that these are a pretty clear winner, these six piston monstrosities here. But I actually did some reading around some of the characteristics of multi-piston calipers like this prior to doing the testing. And just the amount that these exceeded the other two does surprise me. They just felt so much more powerful and stronger in the braking. So let me quickly explain some of the kind of nuances around calipers like these. And yeah, why that result does surprise me a little bit actually. When researching multi-piston brake calipers, I kept butting up against something. Friction is directly proportional to the pressure between two surfaces, right? Adding more pistons doesn't magically increase the force behind those pads, and I'm not pulling any harder on the brake lever between each caliper. So all things being constant, moving between the calipers and using larger brake pads just spreads the same force over a larger surface area. It shouldn't magically increase the amount of friction and provide, you know, better stopping power. But in, in reality, it absolutely did. The F1s felt like they were sort of here in terms of stopping power. The GTFs about here and the GTF 6s up here. In fact, I found they quite nicely followed Juintech's own marketing materials. They claim the F1s have a stopping power of six, the GTFs are seven, and the GTF sixes are nine. And yeah, I'd say that feels pretty accurate, to be honest. So in theory, the friction force at the rotors should be about the same between the calipers. The difference seems to be in the thermals. A larger brake pad is just going to be much more efficient at both absorbing and radiating the heat created when braking. And this more than anything seems to be the leading factor in the performance difference between the calipers. To provide a bit of context, on a car, the disc rotors account for about 2% of the overall weight of the vehicle. On this bike behind me, and I'll put the calculation on screen, the rotors account for about 0.3% of the total weight. That's nearly an order of magnitude less. So hopefully you can see when you're hitting the brakes and dumping heat into those disc rotors, why thermal management is such an important part of this equation. That's the conclusion that I've reached anyway. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm wildly, wildly off. But just how much better are the GTF6 calipers exactly? Well, I decided to try one more thing, a legitimate brake distance test between the F1s and the GTF6 calipers. Right then, here's the deal. So I'm gonna fly down this hill, hit this line at 25 miles per hour, pull on the front brake as hard as possible until I stop, do that five or six times, get a baseline, head back up the hill, swap out the caliper and do it all again. So let's crack on. So the F1 caliper first, and after six emergency stops, just using the front brake, not even touching the rear, this is the result, an average of about 17.5 meters. Swapping over to the GTF6 caliper, exactly the same scenario, just relying on the front brake. And again, it was immediately apparent there was much more power available. Six stops later, marked with dots on the ground. It's a pretty conclusive result. The GTF6 caliper averaged 14.2 meters. That's nearly 20% better on stopping distance, which is pretty significant. I went into this kind of uh, doubting how much difference a few extra pistons would really make, but I cannot argue with those results. When you need it, the braking is very powerful. In fact, I'd go as far as to say the most powerful mechanical disc brakes that I've tried. On one of the runs, the rear wheel properly left the ground. This has never happened on any other mechanical calipers I've used. But that being said, they're still over 200 quid each. I mean, I can see why it's not a simple caliper. Each of the three pairs of pistons are all different sizes and it's like, it's a nice thing, it's well made. But these days for that price, you can get an 11 speed hydraulic group set from L2, <laughs> derailleurs and everything. And for the average guy or gal on a road bike, that's gonna be a much better option. So who is, who is this for, right? <laughs> well, either you're a mechanical disc evangelist and you absolutely refuse to run anything else or you do a lot of bike packing so like the simplicity of a mechanical caliper but you also want something which copes with the heat well ultimately six piston calipers come from the downhill mountain bike scene they can cope with really extreme braking without suffering 
any brake fade. So if I'm really loaded up bike packing and I'm heading down a steep hill, these are definitely the calipers that I choose. So there we go, a really, really cool brake caliper with what I see as a tiny target audience. I mean, it's a wonder this thing even exists to be honest with you, but may maybe I'm being too flippant. The braking performance is definitely there. That's not in question. I just think in light of other options on the market, this thing is just too expensive and a little too niche. But like, <laughs> what, what do I know? I'm just some loser talking to himself in his, <laughs> in his garage. So um, yeah, if you, if you think otherwise, definitely let me know. Right, anyway, um, enough of that. I'm uh, going a bit stair crazy in here. So <laughs> yeah, subscribe if you like this kind of thing. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode. And um, yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna go and eat jacket potatoes for dinner with an ungodly amount of uh, mozzarella cheese on the top. That's the secret, secret recipe. Right, <laughs> anyway, see you next time, ciao. It's the bonus clip, time to do do. Right, I'm back and I've got uh, I've got three other things for you quickly. So first thing, I noticed during the edit that the disc rotor at the front was on the wrong way round, so all of the tests are completely invalidated. Um, no, but seriously, the rotor at the front, it has a particular direction that it's supposed to turn in. It wouldn't have made any difference to any of the results. But for those pedantic few that did notice, I've uh, rectified it and it's the right way around now. Number two, like I said during the video, I'm not a fan of the stock brake pads that Zhu Tech supply with their calipers. I just found the initial bite from cold is never very good even under like super ideal conditions so i've bought my preferred brake pads for um, hybrid hydraulic mechanical calipers like these semi-metallic brake pads so i've stuck them on i'm going to see if it makes any difference on on the same hills and thirdly i've also bought along the other trp high road caliper from uh, from the front basically before i bought these purple juintex the trp high roads were my well they were like the most powerful hybrid hydraulic brake calipers that i've tried so i'm going to stick them on after i've tested these semi-metallic brake pads and see if they can match up so i'm going to test all those things and get back to you in a second okay so those semi-metallic brake pads wow wow what a difference they made like those calipers were decent with the stock brake pads but with those semi-metallic pads on they just elevate the braking in like every facet really better bite from cold and even more power when you're kind of braking on the drops like there were points down that hill that i didn't even want to come close to pulling the brakes at 100 percent for fear of like losing control of the front wheel like they were they were that good now admittedly it's ideal conditions today right we've got a nice dry warm day and i've got fresh pads on and a clean disc grater but yeah like they were so close to fully hydraulic performance that's on the drops though bear in mind when you're on the hoods braking like this they don't really come close they don't match the modulation you get with fully hydraulic brakes but still if you do buy a set of these calipers definitely get yourself a set of those semi-metallic brake pads and i'll stick the seller i used down in the description below but um anyway with that done let's get those trp calipers on and see if they can come anywhere close to matching that brake power <laughs> Right, I'll try and stay out of the wind, but the, the Juintecs just about have the edge in terms of like top, top end braking power. And they don't fade quite as fast, which is understandable considering they have much larger brake pads than these TRPs here. That being said, for my money, I still prefer these TRP high road calipers here. And it's for one reason in particular, and I'll try and demonstrate quickly here. So basically, Braking on the hoods like this is much nicer on the TRPs. The action just feels a lot lighter and you can get a lot more power here than you can on the Juintex. On the GTF6 calipers, to get, well, to, to make like full use of the power, you really got to be braking all the time on the drops here and so you can get, really get that leverage. But um, yeah, I just prefer these TRPs for that reason. I'm doing most of my braking here and it's much nicer here on the TRPs. Plus, they're a lot cheaper. I got both of those for 150 quid rather than a single caliper for 200. Um, so yeah, if you do get a chance to use that Zuintec caliper, give it a go because it is incredibly impressive. But yeah, for my money, I stick with the uh, TRP high roads if you, if you can find the pair. Um, anyway, a little bit of a waffly bit at the end here. So thanks for sticking with me, but I do like to be thorough. Um, oh, it's a doggy. <laughs> right, see you next time, bye. <laughs>
that always seems to happen to me for, for some reason. I find a quiet little spot to do some filming and the landowner always comes to like check what's going on. I guess a weirdo talking to himself in, in Lycra is worth investigating. Um, but yeah, no, no problems. The doggies were lovely. So um, right, anyway, enough of that. I'll see you next time. Ciao. Who's that? Ooh, you? that's definitely the Juintech GTF. It's oh, God damn it, GTF6.